Hey there, everybody. I'm Jordan at Afterburner Automation, and if you're watching this video, you're probably wondering, what is RPA? Today, I'll introduce you to this powerful technology that's changing the way that we work by taking a closer look at the basic definition. Let's get started. RPA is an acronym that stands for Robotic Process Automation. That phrase alone is still a little vague, but a quick way to parse it is by reversing the order and changing it up slightly so that it reads automating processes robotically. There are a multitude of RPA products on the market right now, but all of them share a common factor in that they promise to automate, or in other words, automatically perform, certain processes or work for you in a robotic manner. Now that's a lot to digest all in one sentence, so let's break it down into its core components to try and understand a bit better. Let's take a look at the first term, robotic. One of the dictionary definitions of robotic is having the characteristics of a robot. If we dig a little deeper, the dictionary defines the word robot as a device that automatically performs complicated, often repetitive tasks, as in an industrial assembly line. You may even be picturing robotic arms putting a car together, or a humanoid robot like Honda's Asimo. However, RPA is not really a device to be confused with robots like you might see in factories or science fiction. In fact, the biggest misconception that most people have when they first hear about RPA is that there will be an actual physical robot sitting at a desk doing work. But all RPA is done through software that's more like a computer program running on your workstation. It helps to think of RPA as something that is like a robot, rather than something that is a robot, so that we can examine the characteristics that it has. For instance, like a robot, RPA performs repetitive tasks. It also performs these tasks reliably, meaning that RPA will do exactly what you tell it to do without changing or making a mistake. It's also auditable, which means that if at any time you want to see if a bot has performed its task, you can examine logs or other reporting tools to see exactly what that bot did and when it did it. So as we can see, while RPA is like a robot, it's not what most people think of when they think of a robot. Now let's examine the second term, process. Again, we'll take a look at the dictionary definition here. A series of actions or operations leading to an end. There are many things that can be considered processes. For instance, building a house is a process. Mopping the floor is a process. Purchasing cryptocurrency is a process. However, with RPA, it's important that the process be rules-based, repetitive, and high volume. Let's start with rules-based, or having a well-defined set of rules to perform the process. Think about the process of cooking rice. If you had to teach someone else how to cook rice, you wouldn't just say, cook rice. You'd give them a step-by-step -step procedure to follow. Robots and RPA are very much like a person who's never done something before. They need very detailed step-by-step -step instructions in order to perform a process. So if you were to tell an RPA tool how to make rice, you might say something like, Step one, rinse the rice. Step two, add the rice to a pot of water. Step three, bring the water to a boil. Step four, cover the pot and reduce the heat to a simmer. Step five, cook for 15 minutes and serve. When you tell an RPA program what to do, you'll need to be as detailed or even more so than that so that it understands what to do. RPA processes should also be repetitive, and by that I mean that they should be the same each time they're performed. As I mentioned earlier when talking about how robots are reliable, RPA will perform a process in the same way each time, so it's important that the process being automated by RPA is also the same each time, or it won't matter how reliable the automation is because the process is different than what it was told. For example, if I told you to follow my instructions from earlier to cook the rice, but your stove's heat was inconsistent, your rice would be terrible no matter how well you followed my instructions, because the process would not be repetitive. Finally, RPA processes should ideally be high volume, or in other words, an RPA process should have a lot of the same type of work to do. For example, performing a data entry task where you move 10,000 lines of a spreadsheet into a website is a high volume task. Moving one line of a spreadsheet would be a low volume task. In RPA, it's typically a waste of time to spend a lot of time automating a low volume process because the time and money it saves is minimal. But a high volume task is ideal because RPA can perform it quickly and without errors, saving a lot of time or money. I purposely spent a lot of time on the process part of RPA because it's critical to remember that while there are many processes that RPA can perform, there are some that it performs better than others. Now let's talk about the final term, 
Automation. The dictionary defines automation as the technique of making a process operate automatically. RPA's core concept is automation, meaning that it'll take a process performed manually and make it automatic. An easy example of everyday automation is something we all do automatically. Breathing. Most of the time we don't even think about breathing because our bodies do this automatically. However, breathing can also be a manual process if we think about it. I can use my brain and choose to hold my breath, breathe more deeply or more quickly, but when I stop manually controlling my breath, my body takes over and automatically resumes breathing. RPA is very similar to our bodies in that metaphor because while we can take over a process and perform it manually, once we let RPA handle it automatically, we don't have to think about it anymore. So let's sum up. We already created a basic definition of RPA by reversing the words to read automating processes robotically, but we also went a little deeper on each individual term. We saw that robotic in this case means software, not a physical robot. But we also learned that like a robot, RPA is reliable and auditable. We learned that RPA is well suited to certain kinds of processes that are rules-based, repetitive, and high volume. And finally, we defined automation as performing those processes automatically. So we can finally build our own definition for RPA by putting that all together. Robotic process automation is reliable, auditable software that automatically performs rules-based, repetitive processes. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more RPA training, check out the next video here, or watch everything in order right here. Subscribe to my channel for updates on new content, and become a patron to get access to personalized RPA support. But until next time, I'm Jordan at Afterburner Automation, and I hope this helps you build better bots.